Good evening listeners and welcome to Views on Health. Once again a pleasure to have with us on the program Dr. Chiranthi Lianage, consultant in rheumatology and rehabilitation and a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Medicine University of Colombo. Welcome back Dr. to SLBC. Thank you for having me. And the back. topic under focus tonight is a long-term management of arthritis. Arthritis is a problem that I think one has to live with once it sets in and to tell us about it is the specialist Dr. Linda Gay. Over to you, doctor. Thank you, Fatima. The introduction that you gave that arthritis is something that you have to live with once it sets in. That's exactly why I thought that we should speak about it because often we get asked this question by patients that we diagnose some form of arthritis with. Uh, so that means that I have to live with this. I have to endure this for the rest of my life. And the truth is that's not necessarily so because in this day and age the treatments have evolved so much that particularly the types of inflammatory arthritis that is the types of arthritis where our body's immune system is playing a huge role in um for example ones like rheumatoid arthritis gout the other types of uh, arthritis that involves the spine etc so those ones can actually be managed so well to an extent that patients can be pain free that they can have almost a near normal good quality of life and that is actually our aim as a rheumatologist to make sure that they're pain free that disabilities don't set in that there's no joint damage so it's not really the case if you get diagnosed with some form of arthritis so that's exactly why i wanted to talk about it because when you get that label it's quite distressing and it's a very very common question that get gets asked from us so how is the long term management process yes so number 1 would be to make the correct diagnosis to find out uh, why a person's joints are either painful or swollen or stiff and there are so many different types of arthritis and they're managed in slightly different ways so it's always important to be seen by a specialist undergo the appropriate tests that are prescribed and find the correct diagnosis and once we find out what the diagnosis is particularly the types of arthritis that i told you about earlier like rheumatoid arthritis or gout or um, uh, things like ankylosing spondylitis sometimes there are arthritis associated with psoriasis and other conditions so those once we always start treatment early as soon as we diagnose because if we let it linger then the joint damage sets in so number 1 is early diagnosis as soon as possible and number 2 starting treatment definitive treatment as soon as possible now the thing about definitive treatment is that all these medicines uh, i mean they have been majority of them have been used for years and years and they are fairly safe in majority of people but they do require a certain amount of monitoring and there are medicines that are used by specialists and they should never be taken over the counter and they should never be taken without the appropriate monitoring and follow up by a specialist so if you are prescribed medicines you need to be followed up you need to go for your reviews you need to do the required blood tests and other tests to check on number 1 whether the medicines working and whether there are any untowards side effects from the medicines as well but a lot of them are fairly safe they are very very useful in knocking off the disease process and preventing it from pre- progressing so that's the second thing that we start treatment as early as 
possible. And when we start treatment, we often start at sort of lower doses and then gradually build up to a point where we can completely control the disease. And sometimes some, a lot of patients do well with just one medicine. But there are ones who might need two medicines. There are ones who would respond to one medicine over another. And unfortunately, we have no way of knowing who would respond to what to a, you know, for sure. There are certain uh, clinical decisions that we make based on the disease profile and the patient's profile. But so we might have to switch as well. So there's a little bit of this trial and error that would go on, which can be disheartening sometimes, but it's important to have that conversation with your doctor and have that, have that ongoing conversation to have the follow-up to get the disease under control. So doctor, basically you once you make the diagnosis, the correct yeah. one, and you're going for early treatment. Yeah. And obviously, it will vary from patient to patient. Yes, it, it, that's right. I don't think any two patients can ever be the same uh, okay. because it depends on each person's uh, e. body, you know, their type of, the their age, the gender, mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. things put together. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. But we see situations where at a, quite a young age, mm -hmm. uh, people get arthritis. Yeah. It's not something that is related to the aged per se. Yeah. It sets in quite early. How mm -hmm. does that happen? Yes, so that depends on the types of arthritis as well. Now, the term arthritis is used fairly broadly to refer to any any ailment where your joint is either swollen, stiff or painful. So, the types of arthritis that you see in younger people is generally due to an immune reaction where now our, the, our immune systems are there to protect our bodies against uh, germs that are coming from outside. But there are instances uh, due to certain reasons the body starts producing antibodies that will work against our own tissues and those are ones that we call autoimmune diseases where the body is acting against our own self. So in arthritis there are certain types of arthritis where these antibodies act against the tissues in the joints. Uh, good examples what we all know rheumatoid arthritis um, and the other reasons why we get arthritis in a lower in a, in a younger age group is uh, ones like gout where there are certain again these are due to immune reactions that occur due to uh, certain damages that happen to the joints and what we see when a person grows older with aging is the degenerative wear and tear osteoarthritis that's very very common so how we manage these two types are com entirely different and but the first group that I spoke about where there is an immune process that's going on that's the one that we need to really pick up early and really start treatment early for. Uh, so Dr. Will the rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. even though you treat yeah. the, the patient at a younger age eventually lead to uh, um, arthritis where it, it affects your bones and you know there's, well, there's disability obesity and is. Yes, so um, maybe a few decades ago, even I'd say three, four decades ago, there were a lot of people with rheumatoid arthritis who ended up having major disabilities, uh, disability, uh, sort of deformities in their hands and other joints, uh, so that they are then not able to carry on with their daily activities like simple things like opening a lid or opening a tap would have been difficult but nowadays we are seeing that much much less much much infrequently because the treatment has got that much better so when we start treating in the majority of patients if we have also done our part right if we have also managed them right 
we often see that they don't develop disabilities in majority of cases so of course there are some who have more aggressive disease than the others but those ones again we do have options it's not just limited to one medicine or two medicines uh, there are of course uh, you know ones that we prefer over others so if there's no not enough response to a first line medicine we can add on a second line we can move on to a third line so there are the the field has advanced so much that there are so many options available and there's really no reason for a person with rheumatoid arthritis to be debilitated to be disabled if we do our part right and the patient also comes for follow up takes the medicines and has you know participates in this ongoing process of management doctor as in many other ailments mm-hmm. like the nsaid is mm-hmm. where the drugs have to be taken daily mm-hmm. regularly mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. under medical advice medical advice. prescription not that mm-hmm. you just do self medicate exactly uh, where arthritis is concerned mm-hmm. uh, it's the same thing and e- and they have to continue with their medication or if they have to stop is because the doctor said to stop mm-hmm. Yes. And, and not because they think they should stop exactly so uh, arthritis fatima is actually a non communicable disease exactly. just like yes. diabetes and uh, high blood pressure so as you very correctly said once we start on medicines we need to continue for a long period of time um sometimes we might be able to come down step down on the medicines but that should always be under medical supervision in discussion with your doctor and they need to be on regular follow ups with the appropriate blood checks with appropriate assessment of their disease condition and these are as i was saying these are never over the counter medicines that you should go with the prescription that you got one year ago and get refilled from a pharmacy because these are things that need monitoring and and specialist supervision as well do exercises help exercises do help particularly to maintain your muscle strength and balance but when there is a painful joint it's very very difficult to do it and no one will actually do it so exercises initially when there is a, a acute flare you won't be able to do it to be honest and and we won't also advise patients to do exercises when they have ongoing severe joint pain but once things are under control within their limits of pain they need to start exercising being active because if you are not active your muscles are going to get wasted your balance is not going to be good and that's going to lead to more problems in the long run because it is uh, said that you need to move your limbs you need mm-hmm. to move your joints mm-hmm. uh, that make them as you know supple as possible yes. uh, so which is why i asked about mm-hmm. the exercise because mm-hmm. uh, and uh, they talk of um, Uh, you know flexing your fingers mm. stretching out mm. you know moving your toes yeah do all that help they do so um as i was saying apart from the muscles becoming weak joints tend to be tend to become stiff if you don't move them for a long period of time and um, even if you have arthritis as long as it's well controlled we do get patients on to physiotherapy programs and exercise programs to maintain joint mobility and strength so uh, simple things as you were saying like flexing or extending your fingers being active brisk walking these things always help and these sort of exercises are also good for your cardiovascular health your uh, heart it it's good for your um, health um, of your cardiovascular system as well so that is also another thing that a lot of patients who have arthritis 
particularly the inflammatory type of arthritis, they are at a greater risk of developing heart diseases and strokes. So it's important for us to control those risk factors as well, to check your blood sugars, your blood pressures, maintain the weight in the appropriate range and to correct those factors and get adequate uh, cardiovascular exercises. Any advice on the diet? So diet, it's always good to be on a balanced diet. And if you are overweight or obese, maintaining or bringing your weight down to the appropriate range will always, always help, particularly for pains in the legs, uh, your knees, your ankles and your hips. So those are very two important things. Other than that, we do get asked of whether they should take special supplements um, whether there are certain supplements in the market that are marketed as being good for your joint health, uh, etc. So as long as you're taking a balanced diet, there's really no reason to spend out of pocket on expensive supplements. But um, there are certain things that we watch out for and we look into, like uh, whether they have any vitamin deficiencies, like uh, vitamin D deficiency is very, very common in, in our country. So when people do get aches and pains uh, in their joints and muscles, that's one of the reasons that that we find. So we do look into that. And if there are deficiencies, we might put them on vitamin D. Um, other than that, really, it's about taking a balanced diet and maintaining an adequate and an appropriate weight and maintaining a good uh, um, muscle and musculoskeletal health. And I must mention one thing. When people age, a lot of Sri Lankans tend to uh, not take adequate proteins. Either they are vegetarians or even if they are not vegetarians, um, our diet is such that it's loaded in carbohydrates but not so much of proteins. Now, when that happens, our muscles become weak and atrophic. And that also predisposes to more joint problems. So it has to be a balanced diet with adequate amounts of proteins, adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals, um, and the appropriate amounts of carbohydrates. So basically, Doctor, it all comes down to one's lifestyle also? Yes, it um, it does come down to lifestyle uh, that's to sort of maintain your bone health and your muscle health but if you have an arthritis due to an inflammatory problem an immune problem then medicines play a huge role medicines are very very important to stop that disease progress and to switch off the disease process so once um, wastage sets in mm -hmm. of your bones, mm -hmm. what happens thereafter? How do you treat that? Yes, so it's not, um, it, it's actually joint damage that happens. Um, so you can, some people can get little erosions, they can get uh, deformities. So our primary aim is to stop that from happening. But we do come across patients uh, in whom that has already happened. So uh, it's a very important question that you asked of what to do if a person does get deformities or disabilities. Then we have other methods that could help such patients. On one side, we need to still manage the disease, the underlying disease process. But on the other side, we can use uh, certain techniques physiotherapy techniques and occupational therapy techniques that can help them regain some of the functions that they have lost. And there are always assistive devices and orthotics that will also help uh, them function to the best of their ability. For example, if a person with rheumatoid arthritis cannot clench the fist, so therefore that person can't hold a spoon or a fork, there are ways to uh, modify the uh, modify the cutlery so that the handle becomes larger. So they can actually hold it, although they can grip 
properly like somebody without deformity so our aim in that situation will be to help them regain as much as their functions as possible and help them function as independently as possible within those limits of disability so it's it's finally um the way is managed yes and and so mm-hmm. while you do your part like you said the while ago doctor the patient mm-hmm. also has to do his part or her part <laughs> because uh, if you don't follow medical advice and mm. do what you need to do mm. then whatever the doctor does won't help <coughs> having said that um i'm afraid time is catching up with us once again uh, just one more question doctor it goes back to a person being young mm-hmm. and then uh, getting this condition mm-hmm. and you do treat mm-hmm. and then hopefully you can treat at that point i mean up to a point wherever mm-hmm. where things can be normal mhm yes so um here again it's uh, it's a matter of diagnosing early catching what's going on early so that we can intervene early and uh, we are now moving towards about two decades ago the 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 management approach was such that you would treat with painkillers and see if they respond and then start slowly and see if you know that would work but then we found out that the joint damage occurs much much early in the disease process so that's why we need to diagnose early that's why we need to start treatment early so that we can switch that process off switch the disabilities from stop the disabilities from coming on so it's very important if a person who's young is getting painful swollen joints getting stiffness again to have that looked into it if it is an actual immune mediated inflammatory arthritis that is treatment that is the important thing to remember so those are signs to look out for and yes. seek medical attention exactly and and it could be something totally um not related yes it could be not related also and it can be sometimes a part of another illness we have mm. a lot of other rheumatological diseases where joint involvement is just a part of a much larger group of illnesses these are rare but these do happen these are things that we do see every day so it's always important to have it looked into so like you said early detection is paramount yeah. but then again you cannot detect unless the patient comes to you exactly so I do hope our listeners will take note of what dr shirantili nage said about taking care of yourself but if you should have any stiffness that goes on pain that goes on or other similar symptoms do seek medical attention yes exactly thank you doctor there we end this very interesting discussion on the long term management of arthritis to you dr chirantili nage consultant in rheumatology and rehabilitation and senior lecturer at the faculty of medicine University of Colombo a grateful thanks thank you doctor thank you for having me pat our pleasure doctor thank you also to sandra and lena gay for technical assistance i'm fatima rajika the same good night and hopefully we will be back with you next monday same time on bills on health <laughs>